Hello. In today's video, we'll be taking you through the basic setup for the eTools SI trial. Uh, the first place you want to start is go to the home page. This is to be the screen that you see when you first open up the application. And we're going to go up here to the setup tab and go to control panel. Now, there's a lot of settings here in the Details SI application. Um, today, we're just going to be focusing on the three most important settings in order for you to get started in building projects and put together some quotes and documentation. So first step is going to be your company information up here at the top left. Uh, so with this, you'll put in all of your company details. Uh, you can also add an image. Uh, so if you're going to add your logo, uh, that logo will populate throughout the system. It'll show up on your proposal documents, drawing pages, and any other reports that you want your logo to be displayed. So once you put in your company information, uh, what you want to do from there is click Save, and that will save it to the system. And that's, like I said, just a one-time setup you'll have to do. Your next step will be to go in and add users. Now for users, uh, you'll get a screen that looks like this here, and you can go click on new and start creating users. Now additional users can be added to the system. Uh, with SI, you can actually have as many user accounts as you want. Uh, in the trial, it's typically set up with five concurrent users, so that means you can have up to five people that can work at the same time. Now for the basic information to use the SI system, uh, you'd want to put in your name, uh, put in an email address, and then you can put in a mobile number, that's optional, and then you can also set a role. So what we'll do here, I'll go in and set one up here for myself, put those details in, and then for the role, uh, you can choose to add a role. It will not affect anything on permission rights. This is really just an organizational thing. Um, if you do want to add more roles than you see in the trial, feel free to click on the roles tab up here at the top in the ribbon, and that will take you to those settings. Now, in order to sign into the SI platform, you will need to check this box, and this is where you can enter in your username. So once again, let's type in Jeff O here. Now for the password, if you want, you can leave it blank and you'll see a little note for this over here on the right. If you do leave it blank, that will send an email to that user based on the email address you put in above, and that will prompt them to go through and create their own password. Uh, you can also create a password for them to use by default, and they can, once again, change that later if they want to. Then next, you'd want to choose a group. Uh, now for the trial, um, by default, you would see administrator and standard user, uh, but you can add additional groups. That, once again, is up here in the user groups tab if you want to add more groups. Now, in the user groups area, this is where you'll also see permission rights. Uh, so when you set up user groups, that's where you can apply different permissions on what parts of the system users can access and what they can and can't do. Uh, so for anyone that's on the trial, you want to give them full access, just simply select administrator, and that will give them full permission rights across the system. Now, you'll notice there's some additional details here below. Um, this is completely optional, so if you do want to put in a cost, uh, an hourly rate for this user, you can. It could be basically an hourly rate or it can be a salary. Um, and then there's also the ability to add burdens as well, too, for the company or for this user. Um, this is all really just for job costing. Um, so, like I said, not something you really have to worry about right now uh, in initial setup, but it's there if you want to. And then lastly, if you want to utilize or play around with the mobile install tool that we have designed for technicians, this is where you can enable this user to access mobile install. And this will also send an email notification to that user, letting them know they have a new account set up where they can use it. And there are two different permission levels on mobile install. You can't add more than that. So administrator is going to give you full permission rights to see all tasks and service that you're assigned to. But you can also take a look at other users' calendars and also their tasks as well. An installer is just going to show that user only their items. So they cannot look at other people's schedules. They cannot uh, work on anyone else's task or make adjustments. So there are two different levels there for that. So that's how you create your users. So uh, you'll go in, create as many of those as you want. Those can all be set up. Of course, I'm already in there, so I'm just going to cancel this out for now. So that's how you create your users. So feel free to create additional users. This will allow for additional concurrent 
users that can be in the system at the same time. So once you've completed your user setup, uh, the last major thing you want to worry about for the initial setup of the SI system is putting in your labor rates. Now, when it comes to labor rates uh, here in the program, um, you're going to have a few phases listed along the on the left. So you're going to have rough in, trim, finish, and programming are your default phases. And as you can see with mine, I've created a few additional ones that's completely optional. So the way the labor works in our system, it is linked to phases, which allows you to put a specific labor rate in for each phase of your projects. Now, if you would like to rename these phases that are in there, perhaps rough in to pre-wire or first fix, feel free to do that as well. Um, but when you go in, um, the most important one on this, you'll see there's a lot of options. This is the most important one, base labor. So that is your core installation labor uh, for that phase. So this is where you can put in your cost per hour. This is what you, where you put in how much you charge per hour for that phase. And then down below, you'll see a few additional labor types, miscellaneous management and design. So we put this in if you would like to allocate some additional labor on top of the base labor that you have in here. Now, this is done with different rates, if you wish, and you can also utilize a factor. So your base labor is going to be dropped in at 100% by default, but you can also add additional labor types like management and design labor as a percentage, if you wish. So, you know, for trial purposes, if you just want to get in and get going quickly, I would worry just about the base labor, put in your cost, put in your sell price per hour. Um, if it's the same across many of these other phases, you can just simply go here to trim and say, hey, let's copy that from the one we just set up. Go to finish, do the same thing, copy from, and then programming that may be a little bit higher than your installation time. So feel free to set that there. So once you've got that created, the good news is you're now set from a labor perspective and the system will start estimating and tracking labor for you when you build a project. So there's quite a few other settings in here, but that is the three most important things you want to worry about for your initial setup. So once again, company information, users, and labor rates. Hopefully you found this video helpful and please let us know and reach out if you have any additional questions or if we can be of any assistance. Thanks a lot.